moving on from that one, we're going to quickly touch upon this article first, courtesy of the BBC, which is called The Cost of Living Heaven Poverty in England's Least Deprived Areas. And the reason why I had to pull this up because I remember when I was growing up, part of why living in poverty is so weird and such a bit of a mind F is that you never really realize you're in poverty until you get out of your little bubble that you're in. And I remember living in a very rough part of East London, Customer slash Canning Town, growing up in a very dodgy time, growing up around people who maybe didn't like the color of your skin, <laughs> right? And just never really having enough to eat, to drink, whatever it may be, and just always kind of being on the brink of struggling all the time. But then having weird moments, because that's the thing you live in the poverty area. You always have your weird kind of moment where you kind of get flushed with money whether it's a job whether it's a promotion whether it's a loan there are some times where you kind of do well and what your parents or your family try and do when you when they've got some money in their pocket is that they want to splurge they want to make you feel good for all the times that you haven't felt good and sometimes getting the ability to have a mcdonald's or to you know eat a particular chocolate bar to go to a particular restaurant or get some new trainers it really does lift your spirits it legit lifts your spirits it legitimately makes you feel like all those years of suffering this one little you know um temporary moment of you buying into a double cheeseburger is going to make everything great and sometimes it does make everything feel great but you never realize until you move out how legitimately poor you were like back then you don't realize it how most people in your area were starving on the brink but they just kept it they just kept it um, respectful they kept it hidden they kept it private they didn't really want to tell too many people and one thing i remember happening that was a big thing i've seen nowadays was people using food banks people going to um soup kitchens to go and grab a meal like legit things because i remember doing that when i was going to um when i went to a sixth form and we did this sort of like community outreach thing with this catholic church and one thing I remember doing when we went to this Catholic church is that we worked in the soup kitchen briefly. And I remember one of the things that was quite surprising about it was that number one, the amount of people that are homeless that were coming in there was really crazy. The doors didn't stop opening. People were coming in like, you know, every single 10 minutes of drinking people coming in, um, you know, wanting a hot meal and a hot drink. And also the range of people. There were legitimate people there that I saw who didn't look homeless to me just look like they needed a meal they hadn't eaten in a while like they hadn't had a real home cooked hot meal quote unquote in a long time or they hadn't you know eaten anything apart from a sandwich in a while and they wanted some soup or some potatoes or wanted something a little bit more you know substantial they could sit in their stomach and that was the more somewhat depressing side of it that was kind of hard to sort of take like how normal it was to see people on the brink and i feel like now especially with the cost of living being as high as it is you're seeing that kind of being amplified 10 times now. You're seeing people who are maybe functionally middle class dropping into the working class barrier or the working class bracket and legitimately struggling to put food on the table or to keep the lights on or to keep the gas on. All these sort of things that were kind of normal in the area that I grew up in are now being seen in wider parts of society and it's pretty bleak, I'm not going to lie. So let's pretty quickly read across this article where they talk about the food banks here. Um, this is it. Come on, this is um, like Anne Marie. Sam also uses the village food bank. Volunteers at the toy library and is struggling to make an ends meet on benefits. Sam says, um, she had to borrow money to cover the cost of looking after her two children, which is incredible. You don't have to borrow money to to get a babysitter. Like, jeez. Drive around Pestwood, sorry, Prestwood and walk around and you can see beautiful houses, some very lovely areas. But there are places like where I live that is very deprived. I do feel like there is a major gap. I'm borrowing money, unfortunately, which is going to put me into debt. I can only speak about what I see and where I live and like we're very much hidden. She says her financial worries are affecting her mental health. It's been a very hard time, especially with Christmas coming up. You don't want to let your children down. And keeping the heating on is this cold weather. So electric, or gas, all of that, it costs a lot higher than it was. It's a very big struggle. And one of the things I remember as well about growing up in those sort of areas is the, the sort of contrast was crazy all the time. Because in those poverty-ridden areas that I grew up in, there were some families that were pretty well off. And when I think back to it, well off all it was was that two of the ha adults in the household were working a full-time job that was it but when i was growing up i assumed that they were i don't know that they owned flipping pepsico or something but essentially it was just two adults working full-time made you think they're well off because they had you know two cars 
um, dad had a big car, so his mom had a small car. Uh, they always could put their kids in fancy clothes and designer trainers and whatnot. And you were sitting there, you know, wearing hand me downs and charity shop clothes and stuff, thinking, damn, man, these guys are rich as hell. And again, all it was was just two people in the household working. And so you can only imagine what it is nowadays. But also, the thing that was really hard to take was the contrast in terms of the areas. So I remember once hearing Wiley say on a DVD one time, back in the day when you're talking about pirate radio and how I think if I remember correctly that like deja vu was on top of the building I think maybe around Canning Town, Silvertown, Custom House sort of areas I remember there was a building where they used to do a lot of the pirate radio sessions used to happen and I remember Wiley say something along the lines of ah oh, one of the things that sort of drove us was the fact that we would look at this overlook this sort of like overlook the whole area that we we're in from this tower block and we'd see where we're from that looks really run down and you kind of pan over to the right and you see a canary wharf greenwich and all these amazing kind of luxury apartments and stuff and you think to yourself you know what once i get my money up that's where i'm gonna be and if you think about it now i think a lot of youtubers even especially black youtubers who are from london the first place they move to whenever they do get some money and they do start making some coin they get an apartment around those sort of areas in like southeast london these sort of greenwich sort of areas where the building kind of overlooks the thames and whatnot and you get these really great scenic views that sort of remind you of you know miami or las vegas or something crazy it's not really but you know the whole skyline is sort of lit up with these sort of skyscrapers and it's a nice the entire because you know usually your building's got a concierge you've got a nicer lift um you might have a gym in there a common area and all these all these amenities that you never had growing up in the tower block like i did where sometimes the lift didn't work the door didn't work or my, one block i lived in you could legitimately open the door it had like a you know the security magnet doors but it was a technique that you could do where if you shook it enough times you could open the door yourself without having an actual fob in it which is scary thinking back at it because that means anybody could come into your home but back then it was quite cool because it meant that you didn't have to carry the keys because one thing back in the day your mom didn't want to give you was the keys because the fob took you know was a lot of money to replace and you'd be out there playing around being dumb and you end up losing it and then your mom having to spend 40 pound of money that she didn't have to get a key fob you know done which might eat into your ability to eat during that week so it was crazy so the big job on the door that was pretty nuts so imagine going to a concierge building and you've got somebody saying hi to you in the morning you know handing you your flipping mail or you've got like a little mail room all these sort of amazing things happening right i can imagine it being pretty amazing and pretty fun to see the those things in real time especially if you've been able to make some decent money from all that sort of stuff so life them times was weird life in times was hard and and i don't know i don't get any satisfaction from seeing people going through the things i was going through now uh but it does put into it does put into some sort of light just how tough it was back then and how weird it must be now if you never really had these sort of struggles to suddenly now get yourself up to go to a food bank um, to get some amenities or some you know some basic needs that you need covered like you know beans and whatnot and flour and stuff like it's pretty wild man it really really is wild um, another quote here heartbreaking so the difficulties experienced by Anne marie and sam seem all too familiar to amanda cook the executive teacher of the presswood village schools federation just over one um in 10 of her 400 pupils are on free school meals which while well, oh sorry let's read that again just over one in 10 of her 400 pupils are on free school meals while uh, 61 qualify for pupil premium which gives schools extra money to support the most disadvantaged children and those numbers are rising um, she says um, less well-off parents of pupils with special education often struggle to obtain diagnosis for their children and find navigating the system to access the right support difficult the wealth in the area entrenches inequality in accessing services if a family have knowledge that and the money they can go and access the private pediatrician or obtain a private diagnosis and push it through the presswood food bank was set up by miss cook started meal packs for pupils in 2016 she described the situation as heartbreaking and it is it definitely is heartbreaking to see you know that amount of kids on free school meals clearly struggling i know for me personally those free school meals were a lifesaver sometimes in our school we'd have like breakfast that was free and sometimes the teachers would arrange for certain kids to come in early because i look back and it all makes sense at the time you don't understand it because the teachers were so good back then at making sure people didn't see how much everyone was struggling and kind of respectful so you didn't tease anybody in school about it so the kids that were legitimately struggling would sometimes come in the morning and get breakfast the ones that didn't have any breakfast at home 
So you come in to because I I used to buy the breakfast, right? So I think the breakfast was like subsidized. So you get like you get like a bowl of you know rice krispies for like twenty p or something, which was crazy because they always give you a little bit more because the teachers or the people working in the sort of um in the cafes and stuff in our school were usually mums you know from the local area they, the, who knew you or knew your mum as well. So they kind of always hook you up. It was always really nice and good vibes. And one thing you'd always rem- notice whenever you'd go there, there'd always be a c- group of kids there already. Like, oh, okay, oh, you already, yeah, yeah, and they're kind of joking around and stuff, and you just, you know, jam with them and whatever. You weren't really think too much of it. But thinking back to it, what you'd f- forget was that most likely those kids were the ones that are really, really in the depths of poverty. I thought I was poor, but they because they're way poorer, where most likely the teachers were arranged for them to come early so that they didn't have to do it in front of the other kids and they'd get a certain amount of food for free and to be able to eat. And I know certain teachers or school dinner teachers did that for other kids during lunchtime. They'd hold off a couple of burgers, put them underneath and give a kid if they weren't able even to get free school meals or whatnot, or whatever it may be. All those things were put in place to make people's, you know, experience of school just that bit more bearable. And you have to respect and you have to give those teachers and those dinner ladies a lot of respect and a lot of honour for being able to deal with those sort of situations in a really dignified way. Really, really do, man. But... Yeah, hopefully it gets better before it gets worse. But you know, in this situation, it probably doesn't work out that way. It has it has to get worse before it gets better. But it is good to see it being reported, you know, on places like the BBC and people are kind of highlighting these sort of things so you actually know what the climate's like out there. But this is what it's always been like in the areas that I've kind of grew up in. It's kind of always been that case. But it's nice to see it kind of being reflected and being kind of shone, you know, it's the a light's being shone on it and people are maybe seeing just how dark and bleak it can get for some people out there. Um and hopefully, you know, that inequality gets addressed some way, shape, or form. And when we come out of this dire financial straits around at the moment, people don't have to kind of live this way anymore going forward because, you know, this isn't the way, man. This isn't the